Hello and welcome to part two of the VFD setup, which is all about controlling it from an external source and also a little bit of a failure if I'm 100% honest. Now the reason I am saying this is I have set everything up to be controlled from an external source and it is working, but it's not quite how I want it to be yet. Ultimately, I'm getting it to around 22,000 RPM instead of the maximum of 24,000 RPM. And the reason for this is the input voltage isn't quite high enough as it needs to be. Now, the reason I'm telling you this and ultimately the reason I'm still putting the video out there is because A, people are asking me for it, B, there's still a lot of useful information in the video for how to set this VFD up, but also C, it's a little bit cheeky. Hopefully somebody may watch this video and be able to tell me what I'm missing from the setup to get that last little bit out of the spindle itself and get the full range of the RPM. Now, I do want to take a second to thank the people that have helped me so far, such as Techie DIY. I really do appreciate the time that people have spent to help me get this far, you know, as we are at the moment. And also do remember, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm a guy that's learning as he goes along and just simply doing his best. So if you see something that I need to do, need to change, need to improve, let me know in a constructive way in the comments section down below. But for now, let's move on. I'll show you what I've done so far and how far I've got through this setup, ultimately to get it to run from an external source. So we're about to change a few settings on the VFD, ultimately to tell it to work from an external source. But the first thing I'm going to say is this is a Viva VFD. If you are using a different type of VFD, you may have similar settings, but they may be different program numbers on the menu setup itself. So refer to your manual to try and find the correct settings for your VFD. Only copy these settings, obviously, if you are using the exact same model as me. Now, we need to tell the VFD a couple of things. The first thing is that we want to use an external uh, signal to turn the spindle on. The second thing we need to tell it is what that external signal is. We also need to tell it that we expect the um, spindle to run forward, and we also need to tell it to effectively turn that spindle on once it's detected the signal is good. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the menu system and we're going to go to PNO3. And we're going to click set in this. Now there are a couple of different options in this. Obviously number two is telling it to pick the signal up from the panel. Number three is telling it to pick the signal up from a five volt. Number four is a 10 volt. And there are a couple of other options as well after this. The ones that we are interested in is either the number three for five volt or number four for 10 volt. Now for the moment, I'm gonna select number three on this because five volt is the first option we'll be going with. I will be moving on to 10 volts later and I'll explain that as we go through the video. The next setting we want is number four and this is ultimately telling the VFD that we do actually want to use an external control for the spindle. So if I go back into that, select number four and we're gonna change this to option number two and click set. Now the next menu is number five. This is telling the spindle what direction we expect it to travel in. Number three is both directions. Number two is reverse and number one is to go forward or clockwise. So that is what we want. We're going to select okay for that. We don't need menu six, so we're gonna skip past that. Go to menu seven. We're gonna select this and change it from one to two. Now this is about telling the spindle that after it's detected the signal is okay, that we wanted to start it up. So oh, we'll go back into that a second, select two and click set. Now that particular setting that I was referencing there is one that caught me out. This is ultimately, it's a bit like a fail safe. I did all the other settings and I couldn't get the spindle to run. And this one was one that was basically hiding and I didn't quite pick it up. So if you're having a similar issue to me, that might be the one that you need to change, which is ultimately as the same. Once it detects the signal is good for the spindle to run, it will then say, okay, now start the spindle up. So when looking for an external source to control your VFD, the first thing you need to consider is what am I going to use? Well, you can potentially use something like the spindle output from your control box straight into the VFD if it will accept it and run it by that. Obviously this box has a manual speed control so I'm not going to be using it for this setup. We're gonna look at what is a more common option which is the laser output port, also known as a PWM port. Now what this basically does is no matter whether your machine is running the spindle or laser, it will output via this port and ultimately we can use this PWM control to power the spindle, obviously and to adjust the RPM range that it is going through. 
So we're going to be using that, but there are a couple of wires on this connection. So let's take a closer look at those and I'll quickly explain what each wire is and how that is in reference to setting up the VFD. So this is a typical laser connection. Now we have three cables, a red, a black and a yellow. Different manufacturers may put them in different orders, but this is the typical setup. Now the red should be a constant 12 volt live, the black should be the ground, and the yellow should be the variable PWM signal. On your laser, it is the yellow one that ultimately controls, controls the power of the laser itself, whether it's high or low, and that's exactly what we're going to use it for on the spindle to control whether it's low or high RPMs. Now what I would say is if you do have something like a multimeter, just double check that these wirings are correct. Ultimately, that the red is the 12 volt live and not the yellow PWM. As I say, it should be this way around, but it's always worth doing a check just to be safe. So what I've simply done is put a post-it note in place to hide the wires in the background to make it easier for the camera to detect what we're doing here. The other thing I should point out as well is I'm not using the standard colours and that's why I explain this cable up front first because the cable I'm actually using is just to spare what I've got whilst I am experimenting. So to make it very clear, in my setup here, the red is technically the yellow cable you'll be using. The white is the ground cable and the black is the 12 volt live. I'll leave some little um, key symbol in the corner of the um, screen just to make it easier going forward. So the first thing that I did was connect the PWM wire into the 5 volt in. This is about the incoming signal that the VFD needs to detect and ultimately that is the signal from the PWM cable. And obviously because we're using the 5 volt input for this, we would use the 5 volt input on the settings that I was talking about earlier. The second thing I did was connect the ground cable to the ground terminal on the VFD. And the third thing, you will see there is this loop going on here. This is connecting the forward signal to the ground signal. Now the reason for this, and that isn't quite clear, if I pull the cable down it may show it slightly better. The reason for this setup is we ultimately need to tell it that when it picks a signal up, we want the spindle to only spin forward. Now sometimes you can control the spindle and have it spin forwards and in reverse, but for everything I'm doing, I purely want it to go forward. So this sort of short circuit here is always telling the VFD that we want it to move forward or spin the spindle in a forward direction direction. And the 12 volt cable is essentially redundant so you just put a terminal block on this cap it off and make it safe. Now this setup does technically work but not to the maximum potential and I'll quickly explain why. The input voltage on the PWM cable maxes out at around 3.3, 3.4 volts. Now the VFD has a range of 0 to 5 volts for the input signal. So essentially it's only getting around 3 quarters of the power on the input signal that it requires. So ultimately what that means is it's only going to tell the spindle to run at 3 quarters of the power. So on using this setup here, the spindle maxes out at around 18,000 RPM. Obviously it has a top range of 24,000 RPM. So whilst it does work, it's technically not getting the um, spindle to the top speed, so therefore I needed to look for another solution. So I moved on to looking at one of these. This is essentially a PWM voltage converter. Let's take a closer look at this and I'll try and explain how it works. So the way this is meant to work is you have the incoming PWM signal going in on the left hand side. This is our lower voltage signal. We have a constant 12 volt supply going to the middle ultimately to allow this device to run. And on the right hand side we have the outgoing um, wires which should be the correct voltage that we're aiming to get. But I'll show you this wired up just so you can see an example of what I mean. So as I said, when connecting with this new board, we're going to change number three to input signal number four, which is 10 volt and click select on that. So this is probably an electrical engineer's worst nightmare. It should be mounted correctly, but obviously whilst I'm experimenting, I am just doing this quickly for ease. So this is wired up as I just explained. We've got the ground from the um, laser cable. Then we've got the PWM connection. This is ultimately the input for the board. Then we've got the 12 volt live coming in and the ground is just connected up to the other ground purely because they run off the same ground anyway, so it should be fine. So this is basically the input sorted and the constant power sorted and then on the opposite side we have the output which should be sending the signal 
to the VFD. Now the difference between this and the original setup is this will output up to 10 volts. So what we've had to do is move the input signal on the VFD from the 5 volt in to the 10 volt in. And obviously adjust that setting that I mentioned earlier on the setup itself in order to detect the 10 volt in. Now, when this setup runs, it is better than the previous setup, but it's still not at 100%. So this is outputting at around 8.8 .8 volts and therefore that translates into RPM at around 22,000 RPM instead of the maximum 24,000 RPM. And no matter what I do with adjusting this screw, it is not adjusting the output voltage um, into the VFD itself. I've tried two of these modules in case one was faulty and as I say, it is exactly the same. This screw appears to do nothing. So I imagine it's something to do with my setup. I don't know maybe it needs more voltage on the input but this is where i'm at at the moment the maximum rpm i can get out of this is 22,000 rpm i have purchased another board and i'll quickly show you this now but ultimately i fried it before managing to test it correctly so i probably need to order a new one so whilst these two do look very similar, I am going to try and explain the difference between them. And as I say, always take into account that I am not an electrical engineer. So the one on the left takes the input PWM signal and ultimately outputs it to an analog voltage signal that we are meant to be able to adjust, as I mentioned earlier, using this screw. Now the one on the right is meant to adjust the incoming frequency and output that to a specific voltage again that we want similarly using the little screw here so i was hoping this one would do the job of using the frequency from the pwm as opposed to the incoming voltage however i did fry this because i made a slight small mistake in wiring up and ultimately i need to order a new one of these so hopefully that may fix it when we get there but i'll have to wait and see so there we are as i said i am like you know 99 of the way there it's just that last little bit that i need to figure out and hopefully maybe a new one of these devices that are fried may get it working we will see but as i said if you can see something obvious that i've missed or not done please do let me know because ultimately i want to put another video out just to show how to get this running 100 percent efficient and obviously to the maximum range of the setup so thank you all very much for watching if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up and subscribe as always and final thanks always goes to my patrons thank you very much for supporting the channel i will see you all on the next episode